Uh, my name is Akeen Fernandez, and I'm the CEO of Azteco. And what I'm going to talk to you today about is uh, the solution to the big unspoken problem in Bitcoin. Now, for Bitcoin to fulfill its promise, billions of people have to be using it. And so the question that begged by that fact is how are we going to get billions of people onto the Bitcoin rails? Now that's going to take two components. The first component is a consumer grade wallet, like Wallet of Satoshi, Moon Wallet, and tools like that, that are trivially easy to get a hold of and to uh, install and to use. You can put essentially anybody in front of Wallet of Satoshi who can use WhatsApp and then they will be able to use Bitcoin because it's as easy as using WhatsApp. So that first part of the problem of the uh, how we're going to get a billion people onto uh, Bitcoin is more or less solved. There's some polish that needs to be added to these wallets, but that's coming. But the wallet ecosystem is very mature now and we should be able to get a billion people onto the Bitcoin wallets as they are today, never mind the way that Bitcoin wallets are going to be in the near future. So once these people have a Bitcoin wallet, how are they going to get onto Bitcoin itself? It's going, it's, it's not, the, the, the billions of people are not going to be joining Coinbase or any of these other Bitcoin exchanges, so-called, because they are for very sophisticated users who are all banked and who are in the correct geographic area. People from, for example, Nigeria can't open a Coinbase account because they happen to be born in the wrong country. And of course, for them, it's the right country, but in terms of Coinbase, it's the wrong country. So there has to be another means, another uh, vector that we can get people onto the Bitcoin rails that makes it trivially easy for them to do. That's very, very simple, accessible to them, understandable, and that presents no barriers to entry for them. And so it, with this in mind, I decided in 2012 to write Azteco as a solution to get people on board. And the genesis of this was the understanding that there are billions of people with mobile phones who don't pay in arrears for their accounts. They pay in advance, they pay up front, and they buy this airtime credit from local traders that can be in a wooden shack. And they will go there, they'll pay cash, get a sealed MTN card, unseal it, put the voucher code into their phone, and then all of a sudden, they have airtime and they can call anybody in the world. So, having an uh, intimate first-hand understanding of how this works, it was obvious to me that this is the way Bitcoin needs to be distributed to the billions of people who are, don't have access to either to banking at all or to the international banking rails. So the question was, how are we going to write the software to get this done? What's it going to take in terms of the, the tools and the arrangement of the servers and everything else, which is a very, very difficult problem. But we've managed to solve that problem. And now we have Azteco uh, available for through 500,000 outlets globally where you can buy one of our vouchers. Now, for those of you who don't know what a voucher system looks like, it looks exactly like this. A device of this kind, and because our system is device agnostic and it can work on essentially any uh, point of sale device through our API, but a device that looks like this is what people will be using to sell Bitcoin to billions, literally billions of people. Now, in order to sell one of our vouchers, it takes only four steps, four clicks. The first one is to put in the amount that you want to sell, which can be from $2 to $1,000. And then in four clicks, you will get a piece of paper coming out that gets scanned by your wallet of Satoshi and, and then in a second, you will get a, a voucher that's redeemable for Bitcoin. 
Now, of course, Assad's law, they say in Britain, the internet is not working. So I can't show you the voucher coming out of the device, but trust me, Mike, if you can get it out and, and, and make a voucher come out by magic, that would be wonderful. So what Mike is gonna do is he's gonna show you, well, I'm gonna try. he's gonna try and show you how quickly a voucher can be issued. And of course, these terminals, which are actually generic terminals, are all over the world. They're made by a company called Sunmi in uh, China, and other point of sale devices like it are equally compatible with the Azteco system. And so the solution, this is the solution that we've, great, go for it. And so now I've just requested that the, the voucher be issued, and you'll see in a second, it will start whizzing and whirring, and then the voucher will come out. Now, I don't know if any of you have Wallet Satoshi on you right now. Who does? Raise your hand. Okay, this guy gets it here, because he was the first. Now, don't give it to him, give it to me. Uh, you should come right up here and pretend that you've paid me one dollar for this. This is actually the first transaction in this wallet. Oh, good. A Bitcoin the... virgin. No, no. Okay. We know each other intimately. <laughs> <laughs> so you just scan that QR code uh, there. Scan. That's it. And then it, all of a sudden, yeah. this young man will have, there you go, press OK. And then you will get the green flash of joy that comes in the wallet of Satoshi. Fist bump for the man who you just is. onboarded with an Azteco voucher. It's as simple as that. And it's actually quicker than that if uh, the, the Wi-Fi works and you don't have any problems. And so that's the solution that we've come up with. And if you can see on this map, these are all the, the outlets a subsection of the outlets that we have all over the world. We have 500,000 outlets where these vouchers are available. And this is the way we're going to get a billion people onto Bitcoin. It's not going to be done through uh, Coinbase or any of these American exchanges. It's going to be done in the way that the mobile phone ecosystem, that's a global system, now the GSM, Global Telephone Telephony System, onboarded people who don't have access to banking rails. And because the applications are exactly the same as the ones that are used inside these phones, it, this is doable. This is doable right now. And for uh, a bit of detail, there's a gentleman right there with the dreads on who runs a service called Machankura 8333. Now this service is absolutely extraordinary. There are 500 million people on earth who use cellular telephones that are not smartphones. Previously, Bitcoin access or access to Bitcoin rails wasn't available to them because they're not using smartphones. But now, thanks to this service, they can use an Azteco voucher to top up a non-smartphone and be brought on to the Bitcoin ecosystem. This is absolutely extraordinary. It's the last mile of the users that we weren't able to access, but now we can. So, in terms of the, 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 uh, the subject of this talk, that's another solution that's bringing Bitcoin to the last mile, to the people who are the least included, the guys who don't have, guys and ladies, who don't have smartphones. And so, in order for this magic to happen, it's very important that Bitcoin is allowed to flourish on its own terms. You cannot have a situation where the poorest and the disadvantaged and also the first world people are not allowed to use Bitcoin because some uh, overly concerned people want to control the way people use data. This is unacceptable. The, uh, the gift of Bitcoin to the world is so valuable and the transformation that's going to happen so beneficial to every country and every citizen, we cannot allow anything to get in the way and introduce friction into the how we deliver Bitcoin. And so you're going to hear a lot of things about Bitcoin going forward that is uh, damaging to society, corrosive, the rich people have too much of the Bitcoin, all this kind of stuff. But you have to ignore all of it. And you must put Bitcoin into the context of cellular telephones. There's not a single person alive today 
who thinks that people in Nigeria, Senegal, and all these other countries should not have cellular telephones. If someone were to say that to you, you would think they were completely insane. You know, what do these people who live in huts need a, a, a cellular telephone for? That's the kind of thing people are saying when they deny Bitcoin's utility and try and say that it's too volatile for people, or all this kind of, kind of guff. It's not the case. Bitcoin isn't volatile. It's a nascent form of doing something on the internet. It's going to take time to mature. And in order for it to mature, we have to get it into the hands of as many people as possible so that the number of people using it tamps down all of the vituperations of the, uh, the, the, the price, which people focus on far too much. And so, speaking once again about solutions, if we're talking about Bitcoin's volatility, the, the solution to Bitcoin's volatility is for many, many people to be using Bitcoin. And using Bitcoin doesn't mean having all of your money in Bitcoin or um, the, the majority of your wealth in Bitcoin, all your savings in Bitcoin, speculating on Bitcoin. Using Bitcoin means using it to buy an espresso, using it to do a small transaction. Using it means whatever use you want to put it to. The more people who are using it, the less likely it is that the utility of Bitcoin will be put into question by anybody you can think. It has to be ubiquitous. And in order for it to be ubiquitous, we need a system like this that's super simple to deliver Bitcoin to the consumer. And that's what we do at Azteco. We're doing it very well. And our problems now, for which we are seeking a solution, is the go-to-market strategy, market activation strategy, that will allow us to put this proposition in front of many people so that they start buying small amounts of Bitcoin, seeing how useful it is, and then the penny dropping for them. Now, anybody who's been buying things at this conference knows that the system of IBEX and all the point of sale uh, uh, piece platforms make buying things trivially easy. The user experience of, of using Bitcoin to buy things, small things or big things, is orders of magnitude better than credit cards, bank transfers, every everything else. So once we get into people's hands, the tools that make this obvious, there's no way they're going to go back to bank transfers, to credit cards, and all of these other corrosive things that hook people into the fiat rails and make life difficult for them. And of course, many of these people can't even get onto these credit card rails because they don't have the means to do it for whatever reason. They're in the wrong country, can't identify themselves and everything else. You don't have to identify yourself to use Wallet of Satoshi or to use Azteco for that matter. And in fact, most of the people who use Azteco are doing so with small amounts of money. So it's not a problem in terms of uh, bad guys or anything else that they're going to be saying about what Bitcoin is and how it's supposed to work. So I think, in my personal opinion, that once we get a billion people onto Bitcoin, all of the FUD, all of the negativity, all of the bad narratives are just going to go away. And I like to use the, 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 the analogy of uh, Uber. Now, Uber started its operations not as a taxi company, but as a software company. Now, obviously the traditional taxi services were very threatened, quite rightly, that Uber was gonna come in and just eat their lunch completely. Now, they tried to stop Uber in Britain, went to the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and lobbied him to close Uber down, but everybody was using it. The children of politicians were using it. Everybody from the top to the bottom was using Uber because it's super convenient, better than any black cab. And so, if we can do this with Bitcoin, if we can replicate that ease of use, ease of delivery and everything else, people are going to A, complain about it, and B, try to stop it, and C, will fail. Because people like utility. People want an easier life, not a harder life. And if anybody's used any of these bank apps from the traditional rails, 
you'll know how sclerotic, awful, invasive, badly designed, and everything else that these apps are compared to Wallet of Satoshi, which I think is, one, is the gold standard now for usability. So we are going to get there. We have to make the arguments, and not only make the arguments, but put in front of people the means to get Bitcoin and the tools with which they can use it. And so that's Azteco's mission. That's Azteco's solution to the problem of how we're going to get Bitcoin to a billion people. And once again, you can see these crazy numbers on this map. This map is incomplete. We have 200,000 outlets in Brazil, 200,000 outlets in South Africa. They're slowly getting activated just by word of mouth. When we start the activation campaign that we're going to be uh, paying for, you're going to see an explosion of Bitcoin adoption bigger than you've ever experienced before. Yeah. Because Well, we're doing our best, and believe me, it's extraordinarily difficult because everybody's attacking us. Everybody's uh, saying what you're doing is wrong. The, the, and, I, and this is another thing, if we're talking about solutions, if you're running a Bitcoin business of any kind, one of the things you must never ever do, if your business model is correct, is to mischaracterize Bitcoin as money. This is the death knell for you. This is the curse of the fiat system to call what is not money, money. And if you allow yourself to have your Bitcoin business mischaracterized as money, instantaneously, the Genslers, the Loomises, and all of these lovely people will come to try and regulate you. And of course, regulate is actually a synonym for destroy. So if you're going to do something in Bitcoin, you have to be careful about how you talk about it careful about how you discuss and describe Bitcoin. And it's actually quite easy if you think about it. Bitcoin is just like a message on WhatsApp. It's just like an SMS and all these other very familiar things that nobody dares call money because they're just not money. Now, in order to analogize Bitcoin and explain to people why you can actually pay for a coffee or pay for a beer with Bitcoin, you have to say, well, it's a kind of money. And so when you pay for something with Bitcoin, the feeling and the effect is that it's money. It has a money effect, but a money effect is not money. It's an effect. And in law, we have to be very careful to go by the word of the law and not by analogy. And people who are well-meaning have been calling Bitcoin money and actually I've been getting in trouble for saying Bitcoin is not money, but I like trouble. But that's another story. So. It's very important that we contextualize Bitcoin in a way that will keep the Genslers and all these people off of our backs so we can continue to spread globally and make this a reality, just as Uber spread without getting a taxi license in order to t take over the entire world and decimate the old taxi business. I haven't used a traditional taxi in I don't know how many years because I just go onto my phone, boop, 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 and get a taxi. Of course, it's not a taxi, it's an Uber, it's a different thing. Ubers are not taxis, Bitcoin is not money. Wallet of Satoshi is not in a bank. It's very important to understand this, and when you talk about Bitcoin, and when you evangelize about it, and try and get people to understand it and use it, contextualizing it properly is super important. When we talk about Wallet of Satoshi, the app, if we call it a wallet, naturally, because you can pay with this wallet, the, in, the, the, imp, the implied, um, the implication is that what's in Wallet of Satoshi is a kind of money, because after all, it's a wallet. Now, when you receive Bitcoin on Wallet of Satoshi, you're receiving what appears to be a balance of money. But if we're talking about Bitcoin, that's not actually the case. We're talking about signatures that are sent back and forth over the internet. And if it's an on-chain transaction, it's basically just an entry in a ledger, entry in a database. It's not money, it looks like money. So if I, if I took, for example, a, a screen like this 
and put a dollar sign next to this here. That wouldn't make the screen uh, a mo uh, money. It wouldn't make the projector a money transmitter because it's, tra it's transmitting a dollar sign onto the screen. And so that's what's happening in Bitcoin. Developers are using conventions to make people comfortable with the function of these Bitcoin wallets. And that sowed a lot of confusion with the legislatures and the people who run them. So when we're talking about solutions, again, if you want Bitcoin to spread exponentially in your jurisdiction, if you have any say over what these people do, you need to be careful about how you talk about Bitcoin. Calling it money, is, it causes trouble. And if you don't own, own a bit, run a business that does uh, Bitcoin transactions, of course, you can say whatever you want. There's no impact on what happens to you. But bear in mind when you talk about Bitcoin that there are other people out there who are putting their lives on the line to bring Bitcoin to billions of people. And every time you call Bitcoin money, you make it harder for them to deprogram people and make them understand it's just a database. So I would admonish you and ask for your indulgence about thinking about Bitcoin, how you should talk about it, how you should introduce it to other people, and also, finally, I think I'm almost at the end now, the types of wallet that you recommend should be what we call ethical Bitcoin. The ethical Bitcoin are wallets where the user has total control over the coins, which of course are not coins, just database entries, but then we'll, we have to use these conventions in order for people to understand what we're talking about. So we have a list of ethical Bitcoin wallets, which are the ones that you should recommend if you want people to be sovereign over their money. So we're talking about Samurai Wallet, first and foremost. Wallet Satoshi for usability. Moon Wallet, Phoenix Wallet, Breeze, and Blue Wallet. Those wallets alone could onboard a billion people in such a way that the money could never be confiscated. Bitcoin would be something that's not undoable. In the same way that Uber isn't undoable now. We're never gonna get rid of Uber for all you don't like it. And similarly with Bitcoin, it's not going to go away. It can't be confiscated, it can't be changed, it can't be stopped if everybody's using the exactly the correct tools to get stuff done. So, I've been given the high five sign which means there's five minutes left, so I'm gonna stop talking now. As you can hear, my voice is gonna be hoarse. Thank you for listening. Uh, strategy is for targeting the remittance market in from Salvadorians sending money back to El Salvador well that's a very good question uh, if we're talking about Bitcoin in the money use case when you talk about remittances it's just another way of using money and so let's th let's imagine that we're talking about whatsapp the people who wrote whatsapp didn't think about uh, the use case any particular use case of WhatsApp. It's a way to send any kind of message. So they didn't think about WhatsApp in the you know, camera replacement uh, scenario. It's just a tool that people can use to do uh, messaging of a general kind. And that's what Bitcoin is too. Now, I just heard that MoneyGram has started their own Bitcoin wallet. And you know what that means. That means they're coming to try and supplant all the Bitcoin wallets that you would know and love. And because these people are ruthless killers and commercially minded people, they're gonna spend a lot of money to make sure people in all these demographics are all on that MoneyGram wallet. And so you have to decide whether or not you want those people to be on the MoneyGram wallet or on Wallet Satoshi. For me, I say Wallet Satoshi, but that's just me. You can decide whatever you want. And so that's the way to think about this. Uh, Bitcoin is a generic tool that's useful in any scenario, whether it's remittances, 
shopping, saving, anything that has to do with money, Bitcoin is a tool for that. And so that's the way to think about it. That's where you're going to get the most people using it. And of course, all those other use cases come along for free. If you're using Bitcoin for remittances, when that money is remitted to where it's going, then it ceases to be about remittances. It's just about money. So that's yes, the way to think about yes, it. Yes, but, but do you guys have an actual strategy or a plan for getting the remittances that Salvadorians are sending to El Salvador into Bitcoin, into the economy here? Yes, it's a secret plan. Okay. It's top secret. <laughs> if I told you, I'd have to kill you. But you guys are here already, aren't you? I've seen some of your POSs. Well, we are, we are here kind of, sort of. Uh, we've been having meetings just like everybody else has, and we are trying uh, hard to get into everywhere in Central America and South America, and we're going to be successful at it, I can tell you right now. We've got a very big integration coming up in Mexico through the company of one of the biggest billionaires there, and they are starting to put together their campaign to launch this service, and through that, I think we're going to get a lot of publicity, a lot of momentum, and quite naturally, other countries will flow along with it when they find out that it's actually Azteco that's powering that service. So, wait for that, it's coming. It's going to be launched in December uh, properly. It's actually live now. Uh, so, that's coming, without question. Thank you. I think this is the last one. So, Aiken, when we, we, we discussed in 2014, uh, I think I still have the same dilemma. Um, with, with the advent of, of Bankman Freed and regulation coming again, they're going to be looking for low hanging fruit, right? If I'm a vendor of this and it's not money, but I'm taking money, you know, I, I, I think you can see my dilemma. Well, that it, well, not to put, put too fine a point on it, it's your dilemma. Correct. And if you're in the wrong jurisdiction, you need to move jurisdictions. Because there are many jurisdictions on earth. If you have a passport, you can do business in any of them. So if you're in a country where the laws are against your rights, you need to move to a country where they're not against your rights. And guess what? You're in one right now. So if you move your base of operations here, you can do business from here globally and be free of interference from these uh, well-meaning characters who think, <laughs> exactly, these well-meaning characters who are trying to uh, stop uh, the tide of the future, the tide of time and uh, everything else that's, uh, and, and human progress actually. So that's the answer to that. If your jurisdiction is hostile to Bitcoin, get a passport and move jurisdictions. It's not like the old days of the USSR where you have to have an exit visa. You can go anywhere you want. And in fact, you can open up a, an incorporation online from that bad jurisdiction you live in and operate entirely in another country without leaving your country. So it's very important to understand how the world actually works, what the word jurisdiction means, take advantage of it, and don't be a victim. You don't have to be a victim. And in Bitcoin, it's going to be even worse. When billions of people have Bitcoin and they understand that nobody can steal it from them, the world's going to be a very different place to what it is today. And that is a good thing. And on that, I'll say goodbye. Thank you.